the arpeggio. Embark has messed up yet another gun's stats. Not only is the reload broken, but the fire rate scaling is insane. The arpeggio is great for accurate mid-range poking because of the burst fire, and after this analysis I've realised it's just broken. Let's break down the numbers. So for the weapon stats, we don't know the fire rate or reload time, but we'll find them out in the video. In terms of the scaling, we've got plus 20, 40 and 60% for the fire rate, and minus 12 and a half, 25 and 50% for the reload time. A lot of commenters have been mentioning that upgrading it to level 4 makes it a great weapon, and I assumed this was just because of the faster fire rate, reload time, but as we'll see a little later, there's a little more to it than that. The other important weapon stats is that the ammo is medium, which gives it the arc penetration of moderate, the damage is 9.5, the agility is 57, and the damage per repair is 10,500. We found this out in my durability video. To craft a level 1, it takes 6 mechanical components and 6 simple weapon parts. To craft it to level 2 is 4 mechanical components and 1 simple weapon part. To upgrade it to level 3, it takes 5 mechanical components and 1 medium gun parts, and it's the same to get it to level 4. To upgrade it from level 1 to 4, it does take a lot of mechanical components and simple weapon parts. As long as you don't have to craft it to level 1, then it's a relatively cheap weapon considering the output of the gun. When we actually look at the monetary cost, you can see that crafting a level 1 is rather expensive compared to all the other levels, so if you've got it, great to upgrade, but I wouldn't suggest crafting it. Now let's look at the reload time calculation. To get the reload time reduction, we do 1 minus the reduced time divided by the original time. So in this situation, I'm doing 3.5 divided by 4, 3.5 is from a level 2, and 4 is from a level 1. This gets us 12.5 reduced reload, as the game suggests it should be. I've then calculated this for all the different upgrade levels. You can see the reload time is 4, 3.5, 3, and 2.5, so it has this lovely 0.5 second reduction between all the levels, and this gets us 0, 12.5, and 25, and 37.5% respectively. We can see that the theoretical reload time should be 4, 3.5, 3, and 2, so yet again, Embark have messed up their reload time scaling. Although 0.5 seconds isn't that much, it could be the difference between life and death for some raiders. As with my other videos, I'm going to show you the accuracy rather than calculating it, as I don't have a great way to test it between different guns and keep it reliable. On screen, you can see the four different levels of arpeggio, you can see the fire rate increase, as well as the accuracy over the four different ranges. One thing that I'm noticing when I'm watching the accuracy test is that as you increase this fire rate, the bloom becomes a real problem above the 20 meter mark. You see at the level 3 or 4 that the 30 and 40 meter ranges is starting to have a lot of bullets that are missing. Now keep in mind I am firing these bullets after one another, I'm not letting it come back, but that's quite a lot of bullets missed. Now we need to see how damage works. My shield video breaks down how damage mitigation works in more detail, but here's a really quick recap. You have 100 HP and 40 light shield charge. Your light shield is going to take the normal damage, but your HP is going to take the reduced damage because of the damage reduction from your light shield. This leaves us with 94.3 health and 30.5 light shield charge. The two better shields have different damage reductions, so you can see the different health bars here. But it should be noted that they take 9.5 damage to all the different shield charges, as the damage reduction only applies to the health bar. The unshielded damage, which is 9.5, is shown in purple. This is just the damage that happens after the shield breaks. It takes 13 shots to kill a light, 14 to kill a medium, and finally 16 to kill a heavy. I thought it would be interesting to overlay the bursts on top of the health bars, so you can see it takes 5 bursts to kill the light and medium, and 6 to kill the heavy. That extra burst will add quite a lot of extra time into the kill, as you have to wait for the chamber to recycle. Now let's have a quick look at headshots. A lab assistant and I have done some testing with the headshots, and this is how we did it. We would go into a raid, we would ask someone to shoot us, and then we would look at the health bar. So for example, I would get this health bar from a body shot and headshot. In this situation, I've been shot by the full 3 round burst of the arpeggio into the body, or the full 3 round burst into the headshot, to keep things consistent. I would then overlay them on top of each other, and take the measurement. In this situation, we see that the full health bar is 31.67cm, the 3 times body shot is 226 and the 3 times headshot is 1371 we can then calculate it like this to get the health bar, so it's 72% of the health bar, which is a loss of 28 health. We can divide that by 3, since it's 3 shots, to get the 9.5 health lost per bullet. 
I can then do the same for the 3 times headshot, giving us 19 HP loss per bullet. Overall, this gives us a 2 times multiplier for headshots with the arpeggio. This is lower than the normal 2.5, which a lot of people have been running for all guns, but the arpeggio is definitely 2. For the headshot damage calculation, we do the headshot damage is equal to the raw damage times the headshot multiplier times 1 minus the damage reduction. So in this situation, 9.5 times 2 times 1 minus 40% for a light shield. 19 times 0.6 gets us 11.4 damage. It should be noted, because this is all multiplication, it doesn't matter the order that this happens in. I've had some commenters saying that you're doing it the wrong way around, but it doesn't matter because it's all multiplication, they can all happen in any order. When we apply this to the health bar, we can see that that's 9.5 damage to the light shield. It's always the base damage, not the headshot damage that goes to the shields, and 11.4 damage that goes to the health bar, as it's been reduced by that 0.4 damage reduction. This gives us 8 headshots to kill a light, 9 to kill a medium, and 10 to kill a heavy. Of course this is very difficult, assuming you're going to hit 8, 9 or 10 headshots in a row is kind of unlikely, but this is the absolute minimum shots that could kill you. Again I thought it would be interesting to overlay the bursts, for the light and medium it's 3 bursts, and finally for the heavy it's 4. So now we have the shots to kill, we need to get the fire rate, but since the arpeggio is a burst fire, it's been a little bit more difficult to calculate than the other weapons, therefore I use a slightly different method to analyse the fire rate. So firstly, we need to look at the normal fire rate calculation. This is shots minus 1 times the FPS divided by the frames. This is what we use in all the other videos, so if you want a breakdown, look at them. This is 23 times 60 divided by 160 to get us 8.6 shots per second or 520 shots per minute. This is a very nice way to do it. This is using the buffer method. Again, it's explained in the other videos. But when we compare it to what it should be, again, things are not adding up. The fire rate here has been calculated for the four different levels and the percentage shown below. Assuming 4.8 as the baseline, we get 19 and 42% which is approximate to what the game says it should be at 20 and 40. These errors are just with an experimental error. However, when we look at the level 4, we get an 8.6 RPS, which gives us an 80% increased fire rate. When you compare this to the 60%, you see this is actually a lot faster than it should be. I then thought, how does this actually work? Why is this happening? So I wanted to delve deeper into how the burst actually works. So first off, I wanted to show you how I was thinking about it. I'm going to be using the level 4 for all the examples here, just to keep it easy. On the left you see the magazine start, and in the 3 bullets after that. At the right you see the magazine end, this is the last 3 bullets in the magazine. So we can then measure 4 different sections here. The full magazine, so going from 24 bullets to 0 bullet. We can measure the burst to burst, so from one burst to the next burst. And we can break that down into the burst and the time between the bursts. These are the stats that I actually got for it, so 160 frames so for the full time. 20 frames from the burst to burst, and then 7 frames and 10 frames for the two breakdowns from the bursts. We can then assume that it's 10 frames for the bullets, and then 10 frames for the time between the bursts. When we then look at it compared to level 1 and level 4, the level 1 being in grey here, we can see that there's quite a big disparity in the magazine to magazine, but that makes sense, we've seen that it's a lot quicker. The burst to burst is quite different, it's almost twice as fast. But then when we look at it, we see that it's 10 frames for the burst itself, so the burst is not changing time, it's the time between the bursts that is shorter. This does make sense, as you're not really assuming that the burst is going to be quicker, just the rechambering of the gun. So having 18 less frames is giving us an 80% increase in fire rate. Interesting. So when we look at it in the table, on the left hand side we've got the theoretical fire rate increase, so this is how much faster the fire rate should be. The rest of the table is slightly different, it's the reduction in number of frames, but we'll come to that in a minute. So for the reduction in frames between the full magazine and the burst to burst, you can see that they're relatively similar. When we look at the burst itself, 0%, as we said it's not been changing. But when we look at the frame reduction for the between burst, 0, minus 21, minus 43, and minus 64, they look really close to the theoretical fire rate percent increase. Perhaps someone at Embark has assumed that they would be the same thing, but as we'll see, the increase in fire rate is not equal to the reduction in time. So to convert between the frames and the time, we use this equation here. It's slightly more complex than usual, but don't worry, I'll walk us through it. We've got f equals g0 over t0, g0 being the number of frames between the bursts, and t0 being the number of frames it takes to empty the entire magazine. We do 28 times 8 minus 1 over the 286 frames. For the x, it's g0 minus g over g0. g is the between burst frames for the next level, so in this case I'm going to be looking at level 4, but you could do this for level 2 or 3. This gets us 0.685 and 0.643. We then sub it into the equations below, which can get us the actual fire rate and then fire rate as a percentage. When we sub all the numbers in, we end up getting 79%. This lines up with exactly what we're seeing. 
we can then use this equation, sub in some numbers, and we can find out for a 7.5 RPS, like the game says it should be, the burst to burst time should be 12.7 frames instead of the 10 that we see. So right now, before it gets nerfed, if it's going to get nerfed, I would suggest upgrading your arpeggios to level 4 and blast away. Yet again, Embark do not understand how scaling works in terms of their reload speed or fire rate, unless this is intentional, but I uh, really don't think it is. Next up, let's look at the recommended attachments. We've got the Muzzle Brake 1, which gives us a 15% reduced vertical and horizontal recoil. The reason I think this is really important is if you're at slightly further ranges, there's a good chance that one of your bullets is going to go over the head of your opponent, or because of the horizontal, it will go off to the side. I don't think you overly need the compensator, which is what I would normally suggest. Just because you're going to be firing at range, you're going to let your bloom come back to normal because you're not going to be firing it in massive bursts. You're just going to be firing it a burst and then wait, a burst and then wait. And then because of this playstyle, I think the stable stock is a pretty good attachment as well. The 20% reduced recoil recovery time means you can get back on your target quicker, and the 20% reduced dispersion recovery time means you can sit there and get a proper bloom without having to wait forever. So you fire, let it come back down, fire again. This will increase your time to kill a little bit, but we're assuming that this is at range, so you don't need the fastest time to kill here. Now let's look at the accuracy to kill. Without a magazine, you're between 54% and 67% for the three different shields. You can add an extended magazine so that you get a 46% against a light shield or 50 against a medium, and this therefore means you can 1v2 relatively consistently at these lower levels. For an extended 2 and 3, I don't think the investment is that worth it because the arpeggio already has such a big mag, so it's just not worth it. The only time it might be worth it is if you're constantly going against heavy shields and you really want to be able to 1v2, but if you're trying to 1v2 heavy shields, they're probably going to kill you. My recommendation is putting on an extended mag 1 if you want to try 1v2, or just run it with no mag to keep it cheaper. For the time to kill, I'm going to assume you're going to kill the person by hitting all of your shots in a row. The calculation is shots to kill minus 1 divided by the shots per second. So from the top left, we've got a level 1 against a light shield all the way to the bottom right, a level 4 versus a heavy shield. The fastest time to kill here is 1.4 seconds. In terms of the headshots, we've got 1.5 up in the top left and 1.0 down in the bottom right. The fastest here is 0.8 seconds, but of course hitting 8 headshots back to back is a little bit difficult. It does therefore show you that the fastest time to kill is somewhere between 0.8 and 1.4 seconds, supposing that you hit all of your shots and some headshots in between. Now let's look at the mathematically tested leaderboard. So we can see the arpeggio fits in at number 3, knocking the stitcher back to 4, and the burletta and the rattler further back and behind. The kettle is still number 1, and the venator is in number 2. Interestingly, the Arpeggio is actually quite close to the Venator, despite it being only an uncommon weapon, but it does make sense that it's able to beat out the Stitcher. I was quite surprised at the time to kill here, because it is an assault rifle, so you can engage at these longer ranges, but even up close, you're going to be able to take down a Venator or a Stitcher without too much problems, supposing your accuracy is not bad. In terms of the mathematically tested big leaderboard, we can see that the time to kill is at number 3. The magazine percent to hit is now at number 4 because it's got the biggest magazine, decent damage, it's just all round pretty good if you want to try 1v2. The range is relatively good because it's an assault rifle but it is slightly behind the rattler. I would say that the burst does make it a little bit nicer for a range because you can regain your accuracy quicker, but because of the burst the dispersion's worse, so there's our positives and negatives. And it has relatively good accuracy, only bet by the hairpin. I did find this kind of surprising because the burletta I thought would take number 2 but the arpeggio beats it here. So what does all this mean? The arpeggio is generally a jack of all trades, allowing it to be highly versatile in most situations. It's currently broken at level 4 and is 100% worth upgrading to level 4, although it's a lot less worth it if you have to craft it at level 1. It has high accuracy and easy follow-up shots, so it's meant for those mid to long range poking, despite its super fast time to kill. One main issue is that the burst may make you miss a couple shots by firing the second or third shot too high or slightly to one side. If using it in close range, it's highly important to hit as many shots as you can, which is obvious, but it's more important because it's a burst weapon that can be very punishing if you do miss some of those shots. But if you can hit all of your shots, the 1.4 second time to kill is amazing, even beating some of the best close range weapons in the game. Supposing you can't hit all of your shots, you do have the massive magazine, which makes long range poking even better, and the close range combat even easier and more consistent. I've just opened the MinMax Lab Discord. Here we'll be talking about min-maxing, planning new videos, and generally chilling and talking about art raiders. There's a link in the description or on my channel page. If you think there's a better way to use it, or that I've missed something or made a mistake, let's discuss in the comments as many eyes are better than one. I'll be making mathematically correct art raiders videos, and if you want to raid with mass on your side, please subscribe.